Yo, yo, what's good, everyone? You are tuned in to the world-famous, award-winning, behind-the-baller podcast in high-definition sound. My name is Ben Baller, not Ben Humble, and you are listening to The Weekend Wrap-Up. Yo, we're going to get right the fuck into it, man. By the way, I'm using a new microphone setup, this uh, mic stand arm mount that Miles Davis recommended. This shit is incredible. Like, literally, I'm looking forward to recording now on this shit. It's in fucking incredible. Why I me mean, until we start getting guests and stuff and in live and all the other shit. But look, we're going to get right into it, okay? I got to say, I didn't sleep that well last night, okay? Me of all people should know better than that than to take fandom this hard. All right, and I'm always giving people shit about being super fans, right? But being a Seahawks fan this season isn't good for your health. The heart palpitations, my high blood pressure, that shit is no joke. And that's when we win games, okay? This season has been so fucking weird, it's just turned on us, okay? We beat ourselves yesterday, yes. And we played extra extra shitty against the Cardinals, right? When we played them two weeks ago. And Kyler, he comes out of fucking just, and just literally just surprises the fucking world with that insane fucking Hail Mary pass to DeAndre, right? It's fucking insane. And I'm like, yo, this game's a wrap. At least Arizona lost two. Cool. You know, we're tied. We're fucking in second place in NFC. Now, we were in first place and now... Because we lose to fucking Arizona and because we lost to fucking the Rams, we're the third place NFC West team. We have the toughest fucking goddamn division there is, period. But that fucking surprise W in the last seconds was crazy, okay? Meanwhile, check this out to see how this makes sense. The shitty Miami Dolphins, they beat the Cardinals straight up, okay? And they whooped the fucking the Rams ass. But we kicked the ever-loving shit out of that shitty-ass Dolphin team, okay? Without Jamal Adams, a few other key players were out, okay? So yesterday, we had our starting center out, our starting cornerbacks, and all that. I wasn't even panicked. I was like, man, if I don't give a fuck, we're going to go out and do our thing. Fuck that. We have who we need. We got our main people. Apparently not, okay? And I honestly was in denial. I was like, you know what? We don't need fucking um, Chris Carson, Carlos Hyde. You know, uh, Rashad Penny ain't even fucking played it down. This he's still hurt. But it's like, we don't have our entire fucking starting and second string running back. Just my running backs hurt. They're, they're just gone. So you know what? I don't give a fuck. Okay. Schottenheimer is a cocksucker. Ken Norton needs to be fired. He's a fucking bitch. He is a piece of shit. I still cannot believe Ken Norton has a fucking job. Like, this is not us. There's no excuse at this point, okay? I, I, but I feel like we're being set up. I feel like this is like some, there's some inside job shit. Like, literally, I feel like Donald Trump right now with the election. I feel fucking crazy. Like, the plays being called are unbelievable. And the actual, like, the actions by our team, they're just not us, Okay? The amount of interceptions that Russ is throwing in the last three games. Like, what the fuck is really, 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 really good, Russ? You let Russ cook. What the f- Bro, no. You cooking too long, bro. What the fuck is going on? You burning up. Okay? Russ, what's going on at the crib? You know, something is up. You seem troubled, fam. You don't look the same. You're not playing this. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but you need to snap out of it. People are like, oh, players are humans too. No, bro, no. I got to be real with you. People don't put a lot of pressure on me when it comes to certain things in my profession, okay? Because I am a professional jewelry maker, because I am a professional podcaster, I don't get days off when it comes to this type of shit. You don't either, fam. But you know what? You are loved, my beloved, okay? You got a beautiful family. You got an entire city behind you. You got an incredible contract. You get fucking stupid money. You are better than this, okay? At one instance, you had an entire 40 yards of open field with nobody. It was like some, it looked like fucking Roblox to me. It looked like Minecraft, which is fucking dead and open right in front of you. But instead of running for at least 20 yards, at least, 
You threw an interception to dis like you trying to throw to Disley. This motherfucker's being covered. Like you threw some sus ass passes. I don't even know who the fuck you are. Like you got away a couple times. You you threw a little fucking little handoff to fuck. Well, a little like like push um pass to fucking toss to a uh, to Dallas. You did a beautiful fucking flea flicker, right? But a couple of these passes, I'm like, yo, I, I don't get it. You you throw passes to our receivers when they're being double and triple team, triple fucking team. You throw a pass to them. But when Metcalf is not being guarded by Ramsey, you didn't throw to him. So I'm like legitimately confused. Okay? I know our O-line is kind of sus. All right? We don't have that O-line of 13. We don't have that O-line from fucking even 14. We don't have that great O-line that Pittsburgh has or fucking uh, Buffalo maybe. Or even fucking the, the Tom Brady Patriot era. We don't have that kind of O-line. I get it. And you don't got that much time. You got a lot of rush fucking decisions to make. But for the time you do, their defense can't be locking us up like that. The fucking Rams, yo. Come on, man. Metcalf is 6'4". This motherfucker is a beast. You didn't fucking throw to him for the first three quarters. What the fuck? Metcalf is a big boy. He could go against the best of them. That's why he is the best receiver in the league. You let the Rams do this to us, fam? Like, Aaron Donald wasn't even a factor this weekend. Come the fuck on, bro. Like, man, it just doesn't make sense. Man, he, you could, I would have rather saw you throw an attempt to him and let, you know, Metcalf, I mean, he dropped the pass. I could have been a touchdown for sure. Okay. We were just fucking off. All right, so we got to win every single fucking game until the playoffs so that we go 13 and 3 for this season. Okay? And if we even if we do do that, I'm still going to be fucking upset. This game got me so fucked up. I don't know, man, just bitch ass Rams, man. Like fuck, man, what the fuck is going on? Like everything was just fucked. And the crazy part is we barely lost by fucking Seven points. We lost by a touchdown. Like it was just, it wasn't like that we scored 16 points. Like what kind of shit is, like this is the Rams? Anyways, I handed some picks out and we went six and, uh, I'm sorry, we went four and six against the spread this weekend. It's the absolute worst I've ever done since we've started the betting handicap picks. But yo, I, I literally, that's dog shit. Okay. It is what it is. It was a weird weekend of football. You know, next week we are fully back. And yes, I'm giving my picks again every Thursday until the fucking, pretty much until the season ends. All right. And this is going to be through mybookie.ag. Please don't forget if you do sign up for the first time, new users, they will double your deposit up to $1,000. You got to be new user. Use promo code Ben Baller. Yo, we have a fucking battle this Thursday night. Thursday night football. We've been getting a lot of fucking airtime straight up. All right. And I'm being real hard on us, and so is everyone else for being a six and three team. There's motherfuckers out there who ain't won one game. The Jets ain't won shit. Okay. And who else is out there with like a fucking one and six? You know, I'm really hard on us. Okay. But we got a fucking battle this Thursday. It's payback time versus the fucking Arizona Cardinals at our home. Okay. But we don't have that 12s advantage because the fucking. COVID, right? And that brings up this whole fucking nightmare going on right now. This whole shit show. Actually, you know what? The only good thing this weekend was seeing all the fucking Trump supporters at the fake million MAGA march. It wasn't even fucking, I'll bet you there wasn't even fucking 20,000 people there. But they was getting their ass whooped by DC natives. People forget that DC don't fuck around. The DMV, yo, in Baltimore, but I'm saying the DC, real DC motherfuckers, they weren't trying to hear that shit. They weren't trying to see none of motherfucking MAGA motherfuckers disrespecting, taking down all the, the, the BLM shit and everything. You tripping. But that's just some, there was all kinds of super spreader shit going on. People had Halloween parties, fucking spreading shit. And it goes from one person to another person. It just keeps going chain reaction. Yo, congratulations, dumb fucks. We have hit over 11 million cases in the USA. And it took six days, only six days to reach a million cases this time. Okay, when the pandemic started, it took 98 days to hit the first million. 
And then, you know, it still took like a little time. It just took only six fucking days to get this last million. Okay, this shit is so fucking crazy. People have all the wrong info. All right, and what's sad is some of this is kind of common knowledge, you know? And if you took it too serious, it wouldn't actually hurt you, okay? Wouldn't hurt anybody. Oh, if we're gonna live our lives, shut the fuck up, man. Okay, this is USA, the land of the free. It's actually too much freedom, all right? And that includes me and everyone else because I've been taking this shit serious. Be like, oh, the motherfucker been out. You ever see me outside without a mask? Not fucking never. Unless every single person in that room is taking a COVID test and has guaranteed been negative tests, all that shit, okay? They think this shit is a joke. It is not some joke. Some of you motherfuckers have gotten real fucking sick and have got other people sick. And that shit had led to deaths sometimes. Happened with my boy Rich. His grandma died, all right? And that's just one person. Some other people didn't want to be mentioned because they don't want people to know. It is what it is. That's fine. I understand HIPAA, okay? But yo, I've actually heard people say that they got someone sick and like, I'm talking sick as fuck. And like, they're still sick three, four months in the hospital. And like, oh, fuck that. I don't regret it anyway. You know what I mean? I had to fucking be out, man. Fuck that. Can't just be sent around. I don't have a life like you. What the fuck does that mean? I'm mind blown. Yes, I don't live in a fucking 800 square foot apartment. I'm sorry. With fucking six people. You know what? I work fucking hard to get here. Doesn't mean my life is better than yours or whatever. I'm just saying I earned where I am in life. Life ain't fair. Once you understand life ain't fair, you don't go out and cheat to try to make up for it. That's not how life works. Okay, I heard some dumbass bitch say, well, uh, we all got it on purpose. My family got it because now we have it out of the way. You know what I mean? It helps us out. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Like later, we have to worry about it. I don't, huh? I was like, bitch, what? You stupid ass dumbass. Do you realize that antibodies only last like two, three months with COVID? You know, like you don't know that. You know, People think it's fake or whatever. And like, oh, let me get it now just to get rid of it. No, no, bitch. This ain't like... <laughs> Like, what the fuck do you think this is? This ain't no temporary shit. You can catch it again, okay? And catch it worse the second time, okay? There's some really, there's so many really bad issues that aren't mentioned because it's not death, okay? There's a girl I actually know who just happened to speak up about it, you know, whatever, and she went on Facebook and, and you know, she's a friend of mine from college, and she's like, yo, she got it a month ago. And now she's been like, never been, she hasn't been the same. And she's taking medication just to make her feel better. And she has insurance. Her medication that she has to take daily is costing her $150 a week. Now, like, you know, for me, to make feel better, fucking 150 I mean, shit, you know, I spend 150 at fucking McDonald's sometimes. I'm a fucking idiot. But I'm saying 150 a week for a lot of people $600 a month extra just for medication when they could have just been safe. And she admits she wasn't the safest person. I mean, she wore a mask under her nose, all that bullshit. Why wear a mask then? That's like wearing a condom with a hole in it. What the fuck is you doing smashing some bitch with a condom with a hole in it and then busting inside? Every time I fucked a chick, you know what? They even had a condom on? Man, it's rare. I had to really like, it was just, it just rare. Just in fucking case. You pull out. I'm just overly cautious about shit. And that's why I feel like I've succeeded in so many different ways. Because I read the fucking directions and instructions. Yes, I go against the grain sometimes, but I don't go against the odds at all times. It's just you got to understand how shit works. Okay? This shit is not a joke. People think it's about the media. I see these fucking bullshit memes where they fucking show Jim Carrey's face and some stupid ass fucking fake deep woke quote that Jim Carrey didn't even fucking say. It's crazy. It's fucking literally insane. They're like, oh, the media is taking over this. Whatever. So the whole world is in on this, right? The whole world, 300 countries, right, are in on this. Every single country, right? You fucking idiots, man. It is so painful to watch what is going on, okay? 
that one guy we had on here during the early part of the pandemic who, who claimed to know so much about everything, Jordan Schachtel, who's a huge Trump supporter, by the way, super far right and everything else. And whatever, look, follow dude, you know, whatever it's, it's, I like to see, you know, what he talks about and claims. I don't hate the guy or nothing. I'm just saying he says some shit that is actually stupid as fuck for someone being somebody who works for national security, everything else. He is a firm believer that masks do not work. Okay. So Jordan, let me let me ask you then, how the fuck do these doctors function daily in hospitals? Why do they wear masks even when COVID wasn't around? Because it fucking helps when you're catching a fucking virus. And when it comes to this shit, they're wearing N95 masks, okay? Why do nurses wear PPE? Huh? Answer that one, okay? Smart guy. I'm just literally, I, I can't, but I like, I'm wondering what the fuck? You know, but then on here, he's like, oh, no, I wear a mask. It's just stupid. Why are you wearing a mask in the car? I didn't say about that, motherfucker. I'm talking about when you're around other people, you guys just don't fucking get it. But cool, man. Taiwan just had their ultra music festival. Two of my boys DJed that festival. Okay. And I was jealous. They had to get fucking tested, blah, blah, whatever. They got tested at the airport. They didn't have to quarantine like that because they were pulled in a certain thing. Look. Taiwan has gone 200 days now without a single domestic infection, not a single domestic COVID case, okay? But they were smart. And I, and I tweeted about that incident, okay, about ultra going on. You know, meanwhile, motherfuckers are just dumb as fuck, stuck on stupid. And some dumb fuck replied to me and said, you know what? Keep voting for Democrat. Keep voting Democrat, man. That's what's going to happen. Keep voting Democrat. And that's what happens. Huh? What? What the fuck did you just say to me, cat dick? Do you not understand how fucking stupid you sound? You have to be the dumbest shit sucker I've ever heard in my life. They locked down their entire fucking country there was not even go see your fucking family if she's dead go see nobody there's no leaving they were locking fucking apartment buildings up what the fuck are you talking about that's what democrats would do i, I wish a motherfucker would yo they locked your shit down you couldn't go on the fucking street you're going to jail you couldn't even get the fuck out it's unbelievable right it, <sighs> jesus christ man you can't even enter these countries, all right? There's no going inside fucking Japan, China, or any of these places right now. If you must somehow and you're able to get through, the only way is if you quarantine on your own dime in some shitty two-star motel, okay, for 14 days. And they give you a bracelet. They keep track. They give you a fucking phone. And if you don't ask that motherfucker, they come in and get you and fucking putting you away or sending you back. All right. You got to do multiple daily COVID testing. Democrat? What? I swear to God, this shit hurts my head. Okay. It really does. And it made me realize something. It was actually yesterday. I was just sitting, chilling. No, two days ago. Sitting in the house. It was Saturday. I forgot what I fucking did on Saturday. Just, but I was just chilling. And I realized, I was like, yo, I've been inside for eight months. Yes, I've left a couple times. Again, just with family. Been safe. For the mean greets I've done, again, you know, everyone gets tested. Everyone gets fucking, you know, you get your fucking temperature checked and everything else. And we social distance. Everyone has to wear a mask. Even, not, there's not one person who didn't have a fucking mask on. One dude kind of had a, but I had mine on. So we're just we, being triple safe, okay? But I realized two days ago from being inside for eight months that I've rot, my brain has rotted, okay? High key, my brain has literally gone to shit, Okay? And I'm not joking at all whatsoever. I really feel like I've gotten dumber in the last eight months, right? And that's not just from so much Fox News and CNN and hearing Dick Stain talk, or whatever else. I really feel unchallenged. I feel like I haven't at all like challenged my brain and anything else. I've been so dealing with trying to give my kids lessons and certain things and help them out and do the basic elementary shit. But me personally, I've evolved in other ways, but I haven't like in as far as like my empathy, I, I've definitely come a long way, right? But as far as like stimulating my mind and as far as like just 
fucking being bright. I'm dull, super unmotivated, unchallenged. So I, I'm going to begin reading some books. My, my boy, Jim Quick, he's like a famous motivational speaker. He sent me a book and I'm going to read that. And then, uh, and I'm telling you, know, I haven't read a book in fucking 30 years. Okay. And I'm being serious. I'm going to learn how to speak another language. I don't give a fuck if it's Rosetta Stone or whatever. I need to do something to fucking, like, just to really push myself mentally. I got to keep my brain sharp. It's falling off, okay? I want to be able to regurgitate things that will fucking help you guys out. Yes, look, I give you guys free game. But it's time to fucking add more fucking three and four syllable words into my repertoire, Okay? I really feel as if my IQ has lowered. And speaking of IQs, okay, just for you fucking dumb fucks, I don't lie. I don't make up stories, okay? But I've taken an IQ test twice, all right? Once in college and another when I turned 40, all right? FYI, I got over a 140 both times. The latter score was 157, all right? My boy, Tony Guilfoyle, who obviously is an enormous Trump supporter, might be listening to the show and give a fuck. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Fuck you. I love you. His sister's Kim Guilfoyle, obviously, dating Dick Stane Jr., right? He tried to tell me that Donald Trump Jr. had a 161 IQ. I will smack the shit out. I will put my dick in the refrigerator and cold cock fucking Donald Trump Jr., okay? Anyways, speaking of IQs, Elon Musk's IQ is a 155, all right? doesn't mean shit, right? Great, dude, he's worth $100 billion. I don't give a fuck. You know that, I don't care, all right? So I got two fucking points of a higher IQ than fucking Elon Musk. It means nothing. You know what, though? You know what means something? doesn't matter how fucking smart you are and if you could fucking build a fiber and build a space rocket and all that other shit. When you are irresponsible and you tweet out to over 60 million people that you're questioning Rapid COVID testing? Why are you taking a rapid COVID test? And at the same fact, you're, you're wasting tests. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you not taking a PCR test when you have access to it? Because you're rich and you could definitely get it easily. And that's going to be a guaranteed, for sure, legit test. Instead, you want to do some other bullshit. You want to do some fucking CVS, Walmart shit. I'm just saying, when you have access to fucking George Washington University level testing, it doesn't make sense. If you're four, if you're fucking one or two tests were inconclusive, why would you repeat it? It's just so fucking irresponsible to put that shit out there and have this when there's really something really going on. And just because he's rich and somewhat brilliant doesn't mean he can't be stupid when it comes to a virus, All right? No matter how good he was in fucking biology and everything else and all the other science, it doesn't matter. He's not an epidemiologist, all right? And I said that publicly on my Twitter, on some blogs, on Instagram, shit, whatever. And people me like, oh, what the fuck have you done with your life? No, 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 you do make sure. Shut the fuck up. You, you know how stupid that sounds? Could you imagine if someone, could you imagine if fucking, again, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, could you imagine if he, if, 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 but he's not smart. I'm trying to think of somebody who's fucking somewhat, Jesus Christ, who's a fuck, Rudy Giuliani, even though he's a piece of shit, somewhat smart. Could you imagine if Rudy Giuliani said, hey, man, 10 plus 10 equals 17, actually. And people would be like, yo, do you know how fucking stupid you sound questioning Rudy Giuliani? He's the mayor, he's the this, he's this, he's fucking Donald Trump's attorney. He knows the law, he knows this. That don't mean shit. That, there's a million things about, look, I get it. He knows science probably better than I do, but he doesn't. How the fuck do you think that this is a conspiracy? And the funny thing is, Elon Musk is not even from here. Do you know what I mean? This was crazy. People think because I got locked inside my Tesla for 40 some minutes that I hate him. I don't hate him because of that. I can't, I think he's a fucking douchebag. That's what I think, okay? And not because one person, not because two people, not even because 10 people that I know know him have said this. Every single person besides Kanye, and I've never asked Kanye about Elon, Every single person that I know that knows Elon has said he is a fucking scumbag piece of shit that is rarely around his kids, all right? 
can respect the man. I don't give a fuck about his Eon Flux or what the fucking, his fucking Jimmy Neutron's kid's name with the fucking square pie, fucking stupid ass name. I don't give a fuck about that shit. He has other kids with his first wife and everything. I don't respect no man that don't fucking be around your family. I don't give a fuck what you've done for the world and how much greater good and whatever, blah, blah, all this other bullshit. Being irresponsible, you're a scumbag. And just because you're rich does not automatically make you a smart person or make what you say valid. Because if that was the case, you're trying to tell me that the owner of Spanx, now all of a sudden the owner of Spanx is smarter than every single professor at Yale, Harvard, at Oxford University, right? What the fuck is really wrong? wrong with the world today, okay? It is always, and I I really mean this, not sometimes, it's always when it's too late that people feel regret, all right? In my belief, I think after you turn 30, after the age 30, that's, that's late, okay? After the age 30, you should not live your life with regret, Never. You need to go full motherfucking hard every time. And don't, you, you just, come on. That is one thing that I do not do. I don't live in regret. Yeah, you know, sure. Might be a time. Oh, man. You know, something petty like, damn, I wish I ordered my Chick-fil-A 20 minutes ago. Now the line is long. That doesn't count. I mean, if you're going to spend or you're going to gamble your rent money on a fucking sports bet or something or on a high risk thing, look at and if you lose on that bet, don't ask anybody for help later. Don't expect anybody to fucking, you know, bail you out. Don't fe- expect anybody to feel sorry for you, okay? You made your bed. Now it's time for you to lie down in that bed of nails, okay? You are supposed to learn from your mistakes. But at the same time, you should have some sort of gauge of when not to take a chance, Okay, that's the problem. A lot of people don't have that depth. They just don't, especially when the odds are against you. Yes, big rewards sometimes require big risk. And motherfuckers don't emphasize on the sometimes. And that quote, sometimes is fucking very important because sometimes is a very vague word. Okay, but what it means is most of the time that shit don't work out. Okay, and I'm done with this bit. I want to rant on any more of this. I had to get that shit out of my system. So, yo, Miles, let's lighten up the mood, please. Okay, and let's get into a break and I'll be right back with the weekend wrap up. Yo, BTB Army. I want to take a minute and tell you guys about this app that I've been using for a while now. I don't even remember how I found out about it, but you've probably heard me mention it on the show before or on my social media. And just so you know, they weren't even paying me to talk about it. All right. I just thought the app was dope as fuck, but they're fans of the show now and they wanted to partner up. So check it out. The app is called True Bill. It's a personal money management app, and it takes all the stress and bullshit out of managing your money. First off, it shows you how you're spending your money. Like, you think you know how much you spend on food or drinks or clothes, but you don't know until it adds all up for you. And they add it all up for real, okay? So, yo, I was spending $1,500 a month on Amazon, which is insane. So you get to see that, and you're like, okay, I either need to stop or make a budget for it, right? But the best thing is that I can track and cancel subscriptions. They can do all that for you. They literally have canceled subscriptions and they've even lowered the price on some of them. You know, like when you sign up for a free trial or something and then you forget to cancel, that shit happens all the time. And then there's companies that just love cashing in on services you're not even using. Okay, you'd be amazed to see how much money you're wasting on subscriptions. Truebill will let you know when a bill or fee is coming up, and then it'll even cancel it for you if you don't want it anymore. You just tap a button and boom, that's it. They're done. 
There's a bunch of other stuff it does too, like credit reports, cash advance budgeting, and more. They could even get you a lower rate on your TV or cell phone bill. Having this app is a no-brainer. Go download it on the Apple or Google Play stores at truebill.com forward slash baller. If you can't go to the Apple page, the Google Play stores, go to truebill.com forward slash baller. That's truebill, T-R-U-E-B-I-L-L dot com slash baller. Once you get started with it, you're going to see that the financial wealth does not mean financial health. It doesn't matter how much you make. It's what you do with it that counts. One more time, it's Truebill. Go get it in the app stores or at truebill.com, B-A-L-L-E-R, and tell them that I sent you. So we're back, and uh, I haven't watched the last few verses, versus TV, you know, the fucking battles and shit, right? Now it's on Apple TV, it's gone big, it's like, it's fucking crazy to watch it on TV, it's different, because like, I like to do it on both, because I like to comment, you know what I'm saying? But uh, some of them have been whatever, the last few have just been like, eh, I don't know, like Brandy and Monica, I fuck, but like, I don't give a fuck about Monica, like, you know, that doesn't mean I hate her, I'm a bad person, I don't give a fuck about that, you shouldn't have to give a fuck about everything, some people don't give a fuck about me, and that's cool, why would you be listening to this if you did, you know? But on Saturday night, the internet exploded. Social media, everything exploded when Gucci Mane posted on his Instagram that he has accepted the versus battle against Young Jeezy. And now, you gotta remember, this is my real era, right? On my grown man shit. For those of you who don't know about this ongoing beef that has lasted fucking over 15 years between Young Jeezy and Guwap, well, again, it began over 15 years ago when some dudes went in to go rob Gucci Mane inside his house and one of Jeezy's CTE affiliates what happened to be one of the guys, all right? And he was shot and killed by Gucci, all right? His name was Pookie Loke. And uh, he was a real close comrade of Jeezy. And ever since then, there has been a barrage of diss records between the Snowman and LaFleur. There's been crazy shit. There's been literally, it's fueled a lot of motherfucking people's, just everything. It's just been, it's like, was real, real deep beef. And it's one of the longest lasting beefs that I can think of, to tell you the truth. Because there's beefs a lot, you know, way back in the day. But, you know, after a while, it got squashed. This shit was thick, Right. Gucci was had death threats. He would try to go form an, uh, is it McCon or is it Macon, Georgia? I can't, I don't know the, the actual pronunciation. But anyways, there was all types of shit. If you ever tried to do a show, whatever. And you know, Gucci went to jail. That motherfucker went to jail, came. He was fat, like way more fatter than me. By the way, Gucci's like 6'6", a big motherfucker. He was a big dude, huge belly, everything. He came out with the motherfucking six pack. He came out sending motivational quotes and everything else. Like, I don't even know who the fuck this dude is anymore. You know, it's whatever. But that old Gucci's still there with the motherfucker, motherfucker tattooed an ice cream cone on his face. Okay, you know dude ain't all the way right. Okay, but he came out like a different person. And apparently, I don't know if they squashed it, whatever. But, you know, it, you know all this beef happened in Atlanta, where both of them are from. You know, of course, Gucci, Roderick Davis, he's from East Atlanta, right? Anyways, since then... Gucci has made like so many trap anthems, okay? He's got like crazy trap anthems and he has some hits, don't get me wrong. He has hits, right? But a lot of those anthems and this shit stayed in the hood. They never left the hood. They stayed in the streets, which is dope. I get it, all right? And for sure, they predominantly stayed in the South, all right? No, don't get me wrong. They went into the hoods and everything else. I'm just saying for Gucci, and I'm being one-sided because I fuck with Gucci. I was a big fan of his, okay? But Young Jeezy, on the other hand, he had global smash hits. He had street thug anthems that went international, okay? His catalog is just much deeper. I'm sorry. It is, okay? He has shit that hit outside the U.S. This motherfucker had crazy hits, 
okay? And he stayed relevant lyrically, okay? I'm not trying to be a fucking whatever, but like the mumble rap is terrible. But even like, you know, Gucci was kind of like a little bit of the ahead of his time when it came to like the ABC rap shit, all right? But Jeezy was one of the very few gangster rappers who had actual bars, all right? Like he said before, like well, people thought Lil Wayne said it. Nah, Jeezy said it. Goes, yo, I'm okay, but my watch sick. Like, come on, fam. Like, there's too many quotables. All right, I'm, I can't wait for this fucking battle. I've been going crazy. Okay, this battle's gonna be epic. It will be, li- it will be legendary. As long, you know what though? I was gonna say as long. No, I, I think the playlist will be right. I, they ain't stupid. They know what time it is. I don't know what the fuck Gucci's gonna start. I don't know what the fuck he's gonna play. But if he starts playing the shit and he starts talking about killing his, his, his boy, sh- I don't really know. Um, I think overall, Jesus is gonna win. He has the advantage. Um, it's gonna be real interesting because, you know, a lot of people had said there's no way they're gonna be in the same room. If they end up in the same room, I'm gonna cry. And I said the same thing. You know what? But I talked to my boy, Gary Morella. And me and Gary, Gary used to work at Inscope. He worked with Pac, Dre, everybody. Then he went to Priority when I was there. Then I had left. But um, I've known Gary Morella for over 25 years. He's mad. He was the head of Akon's company. He has managed Timbaland and all this other shit. And now he's one of the main producers for Versus, right? More behind the scenes, white dude. Solid motherfucker. I've known Gary for a long time, right? He told me that these two men will be in the same room, okay? So I cannot wait for this battle, okay? It was originally supposed to be T.I. versus Jeezy, which was going to be dope. And I was going to probably check it out, all right? And it's going to be entertaining and good. And T.I. got hits and everything. But, yo, this shit? And then what? I love it. Yo, go crazy. Like, come on, man. This is going to be insane. Like, th- by the way, security-wise, they're going to have to check both of them for weapons. They can't have more than one or two homies from each camp. They got to be checked. Everyone's got to be, because it's just got to be, it's got to be legit, man. When they get to the venue, you know, like total Gucci could have three people total and can't be no, no, no kind of weirdo shit. I don't, I mean, this is just crazy, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm so hyped up that I'm ordering Mendocino Farms and Wingstop Catering. When I say catering, I'm not just going to go do some Postmates and fucking DoorDash shit. I'm talking about I'm ordering like, you know, when you order a hundred wings, I'm going to do that. I'm going to order fucking 20 sandwiches. I'm going to have my fucking family over who's been quarantined with me. You know, I might have the fucking dust, but I don't fucking know. All right. I might even get a motherfucking custom cake and cupcakes and brownies and all that shit. As if this was the motherfucking Super Bowl. I'm going to have nacho cheese fucking oozing out of a fucking a pot. Okay. <laughs> I'm really going to act like this is a Super Bowl. This versus battle is going the fuck down this Thursday. All right, it's going on Thursday night, the 19th. So I'm going to have to go back and forth between my motherfucking Thursday night battle with the Seahawks and this. The thing is, I don't need to fucking hear what's going on. I don't need to fucking hear any commentator. I could have the game on mute, but I need to hear this shit. Even though that Seahawks shit is, is crazy. So I just had the football game on mute, but it's going to be a crazy Thursday night, and that's for sure. This shit had me so fucking wide open on Saturday night. Yo, I got high. I drank a little bit of motherfucking whiskey, and they had announced that I seen fucking Gucci Mane had fucking call, uh, Jeezy called him the snow cap, snow cone or some shit. He did just saying subliminals already. Yo, I went, as soon as they announced it, I went through my fucking MacBook, and I dug through all my throwback photos. I went through iPhoto. This is before photos, you know, iPhoto, because I had some other shit archived in there. And I went through that whole era of 2005 to 2008. And I checked out all my cars. I had a fucking gated Murcielago manual transmission. You know what I'm saying? I had a CGT. I had a Phantom. You know, this was when my life was good. And of course, my life is great now. But I'm talking about I had no responsibilities. I was single. Like, shit was different good, Okay. I had no drama, no problems. I was just, man, smashing bitches safely on a different, every other night, every night, whatever. Look, I would go to bed lit as fuck, right? I would literally fall asleep lit and I would wake up lit and remain lit all day long. I really felt like with Jonas alive that like we were unstoppable. 
and when he died, like a part of me left with him. And that's, that's for real, for real. But when my kids were born, another part of me was, was had a rose, you know, maybe from different, a past life. I don't know. But yo, I was pushing big body whips. I was pushing spaceships all around LA and everything, acting a fool from San Clemente to motherfucking to Beverly Hills. I didn't fuck with the valley. You know what's funny? Is from late 2004 to like 2012, I might have physically touched the 818 area code less than like four or five times. It was crazy. But I'll fuck with the valley. It's all love, everything, you know? But um, I posted some throwbacks on my stories. I went a little crazy, screenshotting dates with motherfuckers could see. Yo, look, I had to let people know how to show fools how I was living. And people be like, oh, man, just, man, don't look it, man. People be like, oh, you know, this person doesn't do this. This person wouldn't do that. Why do you act like that? You know, this person wouldn't behave like this. Motherfucker, good for them. That ain't me. Right? I never said I wasn't insecure. I just said I never told anybody I was rich. I never used those words. Other than that, I don't give a fuck what you think, okay? I'm sure motherfuckers, I've been doing this. This ain't some new shit. I can't, yo, you guys can't compare me to some ATL jeweler or some New York City jeweler unless it's Jacob. Like, stop the bull, stop playing with me, all right? Travis Scott asked me, he hit me up to borrow my Lamborghini. He wanted to borrow my Aventador in 2015 because he wanted to be like, I'm going to be Bruce Wayne. I'm going to be Batman because I love Batman. And I know there's memes going on and he fucking deleted his account, whatever the fuck it may be. That is a true story. That's on God. That's on my kids. Yeah, fucking Nick Diamond hit me. He goes, hey, man, Travis Scott needs to borrow a Lamborghini. I was like, motherfucker, like, bro, like, I don't give a fuck how paid and whatever. And this is when Travis wasn't making bread like that then. I'm just not, not into letting people drive cars, especially when you have a slammed car. I don't have a regular car. None of his cars are lowered here and there. People who have lower cars, some of them understand. It takes a while for you to understand how to pull up out of a driveway and certain things. Like, bro, Trav, he's so out of control. It's so wild and shit. There's no fucking way. It's my dog. I let him borrow any. I let him borrow some money, whatever. It just, that ain't going to happen. That was OG K-Town Destroyer. Come on. And you know what else? I don't give a fuck if Travis fucks with Elliot. That shit don't mean good for them. Good for him. But motherfuckers need to put more respect on my name because I don't say yes to everyone, even for big paper, right? J Balvin's hit me up for like three chains in the last two. I said no. And motherfucker blew me up, man. And it's like, dog, it ain't about that. Sometimes weirdo shit. I did a SpongeBob piece for Tiger. You know what? I did it real quick. I did it in fucking eight days. And I did it literally because it was a SpongeBob movie that was tied into it. So it made sense, okay? But I'm doing museum level quality shit if we're being honest okay when it works with murakami and things like that i can't be doing just some regular ass shit but but i will say this i've been on my corporate shit lately with snickers might be doing some nba 2k soon but yo i'm doing the corporate things to expand the name brand i'm bringing it out there and expanding us because i'm not paying for fucking nba and fucking major league baseball rings and world series rings all that shit and everything else speaking of corporate shit I got a charity auction for kids that's going on this Thursday. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Is it Wednesday? Things going on this Wednesday, actually. I'm sorry. This Wednesday, an auction is going to begin that is going to feed hungry children, and it's being hosted by General Mills Cereal. All right? I made on, you know, they commissioned me to make the 2020 version of the Trix Rabbit. Yes, Trix Cereal, you know? You know, Silly Rabbit, Tricks Are Made For Kids, that shit, yes, Tricks, I made a Tricks Rabbit, I made a fully stupid, dumb, like, what was it, fuck, was it 30, don't quote me on this, might have been 30, 40 carats, stupid, fully iced out, 3D, white on white, Tricks Rabbit, and they're going to auction it off on eBay for a great cause, so put out alert, or bookmark, whatever the fuck you guys need to do, and just make sure you know on Wednesday, I'm going to be dropping that piece. It's going to be stupid. So uh, yesterday morning, I hit the Malibu Canyons with my boys, uh, my homie Anthony and my boy Kai Bentley. Um, Kai's a popular dude, man. He's a he's a prominent dude from Toronto, Canada. Him and his brother Levi 
have a podcast now called Medium Rare. And uh, I'm going to be on there real soon. They got, a, they got a really cool fan base, you know, loyal people, whatever. And, you know, I think it's really easy to pick at them because I did, okay? Because they came up privileged and, you know, they're good looking dudes. No homo, yes homo, pause, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Like, silly mo, like, this one dude, I'm not gonna get into that right now, fuck this. But anyways, yeah, they're good looking dudes who uh, have a privileged life and ain't nothing wrong with that because they're good dudes, like, they're solid dudes, right? And I even fucking made the mistake of judging them, whatever. But, um, yeah, yeah, we the, the, uh, Kai pulled up with me. He's got a nice little McLaren 720S that Gintani had did up. And uh, Levi and Kai, their dad is a legend in the culinary world. World famous chef, super dope dude, man. So anyways, we had some twists, hit the corners out in Malibu Canyon, right? And like, we're like smashing for a little bit. And we hit a Sunday driver, loser, typical fucking dickhead, exotic, new exotic car fucking owner that wears the fucking Ferrari hat that you buy at the dealership and the Ferrari polo shirt that was driving a fucking Ferrari 488 Spider. And then there was like a vintage Porsche behind them. I don't think they were together. And then there was an 812 super fast that was following them. It was like this three guys and they were spread apart. And, and I'm like, you do, the, the car says super fast on there. Could you imagine having a fucking car that says super fast and you're going slow in it? Like we're driving on Mulholland Drive, the world famous through Malibu and it's open road. And we're going 45, 60 miles per hour when we should really be doing 80. And it's a big difference when you're taking turns on the canyons, okay? I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I actually started honking because it was painful. It was fucking up the drive. But you know what? I, I didn't let it ruin my day. I ended up passing the dude because motherfuckers had, I, let, I had to let people know. But it was barely 8 a.m. So to be upset that early is like real shitty. You know, like it's, it's I had to reverse that, that energy. But uh, I forgot all about it. We pull up into the Malibu Country Mart and it was fucking packed. Right, no parking spaces, nothing, and um, I had the coolest car there until Jay Leno pulls up, like right at the same time. They had a parking space right in front of him. Everything pulls up in his thirty million dollar McLaren F1, and uh, that's the first black on black F1 I've actually ever seen. And you know how I feel about black on black cars because all my cars, except for the fucking nine eighteen, is black on black. Yo, by the way, Jay owns close to a billion dollars. If not, actually, I think he has, I think, over a billion dollar car collection. He has something retarded like that. But his airplane hangar in Burbank is fucking sick. Like, I remember going there 20 years ago, and he had a couple cars that were up in the $30, $40 million range. Like, and he has hundreds of cars. He's got crazy rare Duesenbergs. He's got old Bugattis, like 100-year-old cars. He's got insane motorcycles. Anything that's a fucking vehicle, this dude has got stupid, and he invested all the right time. Like his collection is fucking probably worth a majority of his, in fact, for sure it's a majority of his net worth, but he invested way less than that, like so little. Like he bought his fucking F1, probably like fucking six, seven hundred grand. By the way, Jay Leno is a fucking great driver. Right? He is an amazing motorcycle rider and a great driver. I've seen this fool get nasty on turns, okay? Yes, he's a fat as fuck, double chin motherfucker with the head so big that he needs a custom pillow, but that motherfucker is a car legend, period. Uh, back to Malibu. Just something about yesterday. I don't know what it was. The weather was perfect. The vibes were unmatched. It was crazy. I met up with um this lady, Tiffany, who is a... um. OG Chinese lady, but she's a real estate agent. She don't fuck around, no small little shit. Like, I don't think she sells anything even under seven, eight mil. And um, I'm helping her right now sell a $14 million crib. And she's super cool. And yo, you know, sat down with Kai, Anthony, my assistant, Sean, had some iced coffee, had some fucking kombucha tea and shit. You know what I'm saying? Had some fucking gourmet breakfast burritos and all that while we're looking at a bunch of exotics and cool cars and throwbacks and everything. There's actually some little eye candy, some pretty girls to look at and everything also. I couldn't be mad. It was really, 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 that was actually the peak of my day, all right? That and my Wingstop ranch sauce mixed in with my lemon pepper wings. But hold on, by the way, I love Wingstop, right, and all that shit. Like it, it can't see Mr. Chow's chicken satay. But at the same time, it's not fair because Mr. Chow's chicken satay is 
15 times the price of that, right? But that ranch, that Wingstop ranch, yeah, that ranch hit different. I could put that ranch on toast. That shit is just some whole other shit. But yeah, that the the day was uh it was over after I left Malibu. That was a wrap. I got on the freeway and was uh I had to show my assistant, but there was a GTR that was trying to gap me. I don't know what the fuck with it was going on, but I just was like, I'll let it out. I didn't really go too crazy. I don't think um we hit like a buck forty five. And not because I'm in the center, you know what I'm saying? But I was just trying to be cool, you know. But that Seattle game, man, it really drained me. Like, just because it was the Rams, maybe, I don't know. That game of all games just sunk me. It sunk me for real. It sunk my battleship, like no cap. Um, speaking of Seattle, now that certain states are going into lockdowns and, like, you know, they're doing different things, stricter regulations, uh, you know, in fact, California is asking out-of-state visitors to quarantine or other shit. Please don't travel here for Thanksgiving, whatever else. Look, I'm just being precautious. We're five weeks away from the Seattle BBDTC box meetups, right, and everything. So anything could happen. So just stay tuned, obviously. You know, more info goes on here in the podcast. I get more in-depth about my life, about anything. I may regurgitate some tweets and some things, but this is really, because you guys can understand in my voice, the energy, the context of something I'm saying. Again, you could write, I could write to somebody, ah, fuck you, you're fucking crazy, fuck you, right? And you hear my voice say that, right? How are you going to translate that on text? You can't. It's so easy to misinterpret. So I really break a lot of things down here. So just stay tuned, right? There's nothing else I need to talk about the hobby other than the Dodger World Series sets should be shipping out immediately. Um, damn, World Series sets should be shipping out. That was a motherfucking tongue twister, right? Um, but yeah, my boy Young Jock, he pulled up and uh, blessed me with fucking Game Worn, fucking World Series jersey, the Black Lives Matter shit, which you could only be a Nike athlete to get that or the team, all this other crazy shit, whatever else. Again, nothing about the hobby, but I need you guys to stay tuned about the Seattle situation because this is going to go crazy. It's only 10 spots. Um, I was going to do 12, but it's going to be difficult because the hats, those Seattle hats are crazy. Anyways, um, as far as entertainment goes, uh, my boy Scott Venner, Scott Venner was a music coordinator for Entourage and How to Make It to America and a couple other shows. He has a radio show for the last few years with Pharrell. It's called I Am Other Radio. Yes, Pharrell Williams, right? Anyways, Scott always suggests some pretty good music to me all the time. I don't really stay up with it. He really follows it tight and uh, decent TV, movies, whatever. But like when this show first came out called Gangs of London, he put me up on it and I couldn't really find it. And I was kind of like just, I was so fucking preoccupied with other shit. You know, it was, it was like a little while ago and um, I didn't really like pay attention, right? But one of my followers reminded me on Friday, I think. So I signed up for an AMC Plus account and I started watching it and goddamn, yo, this shit is that shit, all right? This that shit that I love. Dudes getting their wigs pushed back, lots of violence, people getting slapped the fuck up, people getting clapped the fuck up, like all kinds of wild shit. And by the way, hold on, let me just give you guys an FYI. There is some super sus shit in this show. So if you're sensitive to that type of stuff, you need to grow some balls, you little bitch, all right? Like I'm being for real. Like some motherfuckers just can't like, look, I'm not the type of dude to sit there and watch 10 minutes of someone getting their dick sucked. I'm just saying like, there's some shit on here that might fuck with you. But the show is dope as fuck. And by the way, I'm almost up to date on it. But look, I highly recommend it. It ain't no question, period. All right? It's not Bosch, but it's raw. And it's, it's totally different. This is, you can never, I mean, it just, it's just different. It's fucking good. And I can't wait to watch. I hope there's fucking 15 more seasons of it. Yo, that is it for episode 133. Yo, guys, I got my kids starting school in about an hour and six minutes. And three kids in Zoom. Okay? And never fails every single time one of them will stop paying attention or Kyle will fucking start crying for no reason and then distract London or Ryder will go crazy I don't fucking know okay but we are outnumbered and so it's just a fucking shit show I need to help my wife out so guys I love you I love you always and forever please subscribe if you haven't tell a friend to tell a friend about this show and to subscribe as well yo it is monday monday motivation 
make sure to make it a great day. Lakey Lake, take us out of here, homie.